Hi, I'm Bill, and you're watching the Astro Vagabond channel. Well, it's uh, Friday here, the uh, 28th, I guess, of uh, October. I'm down here at Borrego Springs uh, for the Nightfall 2022 event. Uh, in this video, I'm going to give you an update on where I'm at with my Edge HD8. Uh, as you, if you've been following the channel, I recently purchased this. And this is really the first time that I put it into service, so I wanted to give you some uh, initial thoughts on my experiences and uh, and uh, some of the uh, uh, challenges, in a sense, I'm running into. Um, I really wanted to set the uh, foundation that I knew that I would have to learn how to dial in this uh, Edge, 8, uh, Edge HD 8. So I came down here with expectations. Here was the opportunity to do it. I refrained from trying to knock it out in my backyard because it's uh, my backyard so constrained by redwoods and the light pollution and everything. So this was really the vi uh, right environment, 360 degree view, a uh, Bortle 4 uh, area. So, you know, I've been collecting uh, a lot of data with the, uh, I'll just call it the C8 and I'm using the ASI 294mm uh, Pro camera and I'm collecting a combination of luminous data as well as narrowband data and RGB data and uh, my process was to uh, collect data and then analyze that data to see what type of issues I might be having such as uh, uh, tilt, uh, back focus issues, uh, poor collimation issues so I expected to run into all these things and in a moment we're going to go inside and we're going to take a look at some of the data I collected last night and uh, show you what's going on and uh, what my program is going to be tonight for the um, for the C8. Now a uh, quick note over here I have my uh, Xenostar 61. Uh, it's working like a champ. I, as you know if you're following the channel I just added the ASI Air uh, Plus. Um, it's a, it's a dream to work with. I will do separate videos on that, on the data that I've collected. I've been doing both uh, single frame, uh, two panel and four panel mosaics with the, uh, with the uh, Xenostar using the SIR Plus. Uh, very easy to do and uh, very easy to manage. So uh, that has freed me up to uh, spend some time exploring with my uh, C8 and working to get that dialed in. I did do my first collimation uh, and uh, I'll do another one tonight uh, to make sure that is on. My guiding has been really good. I like how it's, this uh, heavier scope is uh, performing on my EQ6R Pro. So my guiding metrics look good. I don't think that that's uh, the cause of my issues. Uh, and, uh, but time will tell as I do further uh, investigation. Uh, other than that, the skies have been really great down here. Again, uh, Bortle uh, 4 skies. And uh, this is my second time down here. And uh, if you get an opportunity and you're in the area, it's a great place to uh, do some astrophotography from. Uh, they take pride in the surrounding uh, Borrego Springs area, trying to keep light pollution down. So. All right, so I think for uh, right now, uh, let's take a step inside and I'll share some of the data that I collected last night and then we'll uh, close this video out. As I uh, said outside, I, you know, I came down here with the mindset that I wasn't just going to throw everything together and just start taking beautiful, collecting um, beautiful data, you know, that'll turn into beautiful images. I knew that it was going to through my experience of starting with the Xenostar Z61 and uh, bringing that online and learning uh, through that process, I knew that there would be a series of steps that I'd have to perform in order to dial in my Edge HD8. So I came down here with the mindset when it came to the uh, HD8 that it's going to take me some time and I didn't have an expectation that I would leave here uh, with high quality data. Uh, I did have an expectation that I would collect data across a range of all my filters, luminous, RGB, 
and narrow band. And then I would sit down at a later time and analyze that data to see what, you know, what is the data telling me? So here is a slide. It's a three minute exposure from NGC 2244. And it shot with the luminous filter. And um, right away, I uh, can see some issues with the data. Um, definitely my stars are elongated. And to the best that I can tell, uh, they're all elongated and pointing towards the upper left corner. So even down here, well, I guess they're either pointing to the upper left corner or the lower right corner. But what I'm not seeing is in the center where things are flattening out. Uh, where So I've got a couple things that could be an issue here. One, I could still need to chase my back focus. Two, uh, could be a collimation issue. Three, could be a tilt issue. Four, it could be a combination of all of the above. And it could be a combination that my focus is off. So there's many things yet that it could be, but I needed to collect some data to understand how, what am I producing for how the system is configured, uh, configured uh, now, and then help me plan a roadmap of how to further troubleshoot. So I'm feeling real good. I'm, I'm, I've accomplished as far as the Edge HD 8, what I wanted to accomplish, have clear skies under Bortle 4 sky conditions and collect uh, data where I could hit a range of objects in any orientation within the sky because I've got a 360 degree view of the sky here. So anyway, I'm going to uh, further troubleshoot this. I did order from uh, Agena Astro. ZWO makes a uh, tilt plate, a tilt correction plate. It was $48. I went ahead and ordered that on spec that it might be a tilt issue. So I should have that next week and I'm going to be leaving out of here uh, uh, this Sunday. So I should be home Monday or Tuesday and uh, I'll take a look at that. The other thing I'm going to do tonight, uh, I am going to, Nina has a plugin um, called uh, Under Hocus Focus, I believe, and they have an aberration inspector and um, it'll help me understand um, things about the data that I don't understand yet. So I'll run this for the first time tonight and see what kind of feedback this tool provides me to help me in further dialing in the uh, Edge HD 8. I think a simple thing that I can do tonight is going back to, um, to the slide here is I can rotate my camera and see if this elongation moves consistently as I rotate the camera. So uh, that could possibly tell me if I'm dealing with some tilt issue here. So I've got things uh, to do tonight. And uh, I have one more night here. This is Friday night. I have Saturday night uh, to further do some investigation. Um, there's a person two sites over from me with a uh, edge HD 11, and I've been chatting with him this morning, so he's a good resource. And that's one of the great things of going to an event where there's a lot of other astrophotographers. While the forums are great, and you know I've gotten a lot of good information off of cloudy nights, the ability to have a face-to-face -face conversation with someone to me is 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 the preferred option. And so I really enjoy coming to these events, and it's also why I enjoy being part of two different astronomical societies and uh, meeting people at uh, each of the uh, uh, astronomical societies' dark sites because it's an opportunity to exchange information and, and learn in the process. So just wanted to show you some of the data I collected. I'm going to go back through the other. I uh, collected data on M33 as well, and I'm seeing similar characteristics to the data set. So at least it is consistent. 
uh, along my data sets right now, and um, and that's okay. But uh, I just wanted to give you an update on uh, where I'm at with my Celestron Edge HD 8. Um, I'm liking it. I'm enjoying working with it. And uh, I think it pairs well with my Xenostar Z61 for the wide field at 360 millimeters. And uh, right now I'm working with the uh, C8 with uh, the 7x uh, reducer. So I'm at about 1422. Uh, and, you know, once I get things straightened out at this focal length, and I think I'm at F7 right now, uh, then I'll... Uh, take that reducer out and then work at the longer focal length of 2032. But I think uh, 1422 is a place for me uh, to be right now. And um, so that's about it. And if you have any thoughts, put it in the comments of what I might be dealing with. Again, I'm uh, open to all kinds of feedback, but I am uh, okay with where things are at right now. It, Part of the process that I expected to go through, and I'll I'll get through this process. I do see why oftentimes, um, on in particular cloudy nights, when somebody new is asking about what kind of telescope they should get, they want to get into it. Uh, people often recommend a smaller refractor. You know, I imagine there are plenty of people that started with a C8 or you know a C11 or a 925. And uh, they did just fine. But clearly for me, uh, having gone through the experience with the refractor on guiding and uh, back focus and all the uh, things you need to do to collect good data with the small refractor, uh, I think it's helping me uh, move a little more quickly with my uh, Edge HD8 here. So, all right, I, I think that's about it for now. Um, I'll probably have further updates on the C8 after I get back home up to San Mateo sometime next week. And then I'm going to put together a couple of videos on working with the ASI Air Plus with my Xenostar Z61. Um, I must say, uh, there are some um, things that are not currently part of the ASI Air uh operating system, uh, but I know they're coming, reading what some of the beta uh, notes are for V2, like um, doing mosaics and a rotation tool and stuff like that, uh, but I am uh, very happy I made the decision to purchase the ASI Air Plus and use it with my Xenostar Z61. Um, it's really easy to manage and um, it is freeing my time up in the night to uh, work on my C8. And uh, it has been a fun experience trying to get two scopes up and running uh, at the same time and managing them all night. Uh, but uh, uh, Nina, I think, has been doing a very good job for me. The plate solving has been working well. And, uh, you know, I'm not ready to make a call either way on whether or not I'm going to move to the ASI Air Plus for the uh, Edge HD8. That'll be sometime after the first of the year, after I've uh, got these other uh, improvements completed where my stars and everything are looking real good and the way they should be. Okay, so I've probably gone on a bit long, but if you like this kind of content, please give it a thumbs up. As always, like, share, and subscribe. I see some people have found the affiliate marketing links uh, that I have in each of my video descriptions. Uh, thank you for using those links. If you use those links, it doesn't cost you any money. Uh, and then I, if you do purchase something, I, I, even though it may not be the item at the uh, end of the link, uh, I get some affiliate marketing credit, and uh, I thank you for that. So other than that, I'd like to thank all the subscribers and viewers, uh, wherever you may be in the world, clear skies. Until next time.